Hello, hello, grade 11s. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, Uabutiwa Sos Ukobela Wemetz. And without any further ado, let's look at these questions that we have here. Okay, so we have question five. It says an organic compound has the following composition by mass, as we can uh, see here then the molar mass of the compound is twice the empirical molar mass. So let's note that the molar mass of the compound is twice the empirical molar mass. Then 5.1.1 uh, says define the term empirical formula. So let's run quickly to that one. We say empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of all the elements in a compound. So for two marks, that's how you are supposed to define empirical formula. Then we have 5.1.2, it says determine by calculation the molecular formula, the what? The molecular formula of the compound, right? So in order to deal with this one, we know that the first thing that we have to do is calculate the number of moles of each element using M over big M. So we have our mass, we just simply change that percentage to mass. And then over the molar mass, according to our periodic table, is 12. And then if you punch this into our calculator, uh, we get 4.55 mole, rounded off to two decimal places. And then to calculate the number of moles of hydrogen, that's a uh, mass over the molar mass, which is 9.09 uh, .09 divided by 1. It's going to be 9.09 .09 mole. And then lastly, we have the number of moles of oxygen. That's mass over the molar mass. So that's a 36.36 divided by 16. And then we're going to have a 2.27 mole, right? And then obviously, uh, the second step here is to then divide everything throughout by 2.27, the smallest number of moles. So to divide everything out by the smallest number of moles, if we want the ratio of carbon, it's 4.55 divided by 2.27. And then for the ratio of hydrogen, it's the 9.09 .09 divided by 2.27. Then for oxygen, the 2.27 divided by 2.27. Now the ratio of a uh, carbon rounded off to the nearest whole number is a uh, two. And then here the ratio is four. And then right here we have one, right? So remember all this are rounded off to a uh, whole numbers. And then that means our empirical formula this time around, because we need to first get the empirical formula, right? Which was what we were trying to a uh, calculate using all, all of that. Now that we have the empirical formula, let's go back here. They said that the molar mass, which would form the molecular formula, is twice uh, the empirical molar mass, right? So if the molecular mass is twice the empirical mass, that means the molecular formula has to be all of this multiplied by two. So the number of carbons multiplied by two, the We'll now have four carbons and then uh, four carbons multiplied by two. It's now eight and then one oxygen uh, multiplied by that. It's two. So now we have C4H8 and O2. So four carbons, eight hydrogens and then two oxygens. And that's how you were supposed to tackle that one. Okay, so to then proceed, we have the next question here. says 5.2 a teacher demonstrates to a group of learners the impact that the limiting reagent have on the amount of product formed during a chemical reaction note that the impact that the limiting reagent that the limiting reagent have on the amount of product formed during a chemical reaction the teacher uses the following chemical equation as we can see there the teacher uses the following setup for this investigation we have experiment one and experiment two in experiment one we have seven gram of zinc and one mole of hydrochloric acid and in experiment two they decided to use a small amount of uh, the zinc which is 3.27 gram and then one mole of hydrochloric acid 5.2.1 says 
is defined the term limiting reagent. So again, let's quickly run to that. What is limiting reagent? It's a limiting reagent is a substance that is completely used up in a chemical reaction. So for two marks, that's all you needed to write. Then uh, 5.2.2 says determine by calculations the limiting reagent in experiment one. Right. So in experiment one, we know that every time we are dealing with the limiting reagent, the first thing to do is to calculate. So step number one is always to calculate the number of moles of each substance. So number of moles of each reactant. Because remember, we are simply just looking at the reactants only. So meaning this two. So the number of moles of zinc is a mass over the molar mass, which the mass is seven divided by 65. This will give us, uh, if we round off to two decimal places, 0 0.11 mole. But then note that we already have the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid. It's given as one mole. Now, at this point, we want to use the second substance or the second reactant here as our reference, right? So you still remember the strategy. So this one, we're going to use it as the reference, reference X, right? So step number two is we want to use the ratio coefficients, right? Or the molar ratios, meaning that we want to compare zinc to hydrochloric acid but one thing that you need to note is that what we have calculated here are the available number of moles so this is the available number of moles of zinc and this here also is the available number of moles of hydrochloric acid now what we are trying to do here is let's check the ratio it's one is to two so that's one is to two so essentially what we want to do here is we want to find out how much of the hydrochloric acid is needed in order to react with all of zinc, right? So how many number of moles of the hydrochloric acid is actually needed to react all of the zinc moles? So we're going to put our X here and then try to calculate the required number of moles of the hydrochloric acid. When we cross multiply here, our X is going to become 0 0.22 mole. So this is 0 0.22 mole of hydrochloric acid required. But looking at, looking at this one, we can see that we actually have one mole available, but we only require 0 0.22 mole of this hydrochloric acid. Now, what can we conclude about hydrochloric acid? Goes back here, if the number of moles available is greater than the number of moles uh, required, then we say the substance, the substance is in excess. Right. So that particular substance is in excess because we actually require less than what is available. So in other words, we can conclude that our HCl is in excess. Hydrochloric acid is in excess. But then remember, we are trying to determine which of which which one of the two reactants is actually the limiting reagent. If we have already concluded that this one is in excess, then obviously zinc has to be the limiting reagent. So again, understand that procedure. Remember, every time you are given two reactants, one must be in excess and the other must be limiting. We cannot have two limiting reagents. We cannot have two excess reagents. So now that we have proven that the hydrochloric acid is in excess, then we can then conclude that zinc is the limiting reagent. So zinc is the limiting reagent. So I hope uh, that makes sense. Okay, so 5.2.3. It says, how will the amount of zinc chloride produced in experiment 2 compare to that of experiment 1? Now remember, we've already identified that zinc here is a limiting reagent. But then now in experiment 2, you can see that as much as zinc is a limiting reagent, they also even used a smaller amount of the zinc, which obviously since the limiting reagent is the one that affects uh, the, the, the number or the amount of products that can be formed. That means the lower the limiting reagent, the less uh, the amount of the products that will be formed. So obviously in this case, we would say lower than. 
And then our reason would be that zinc is a limiting reagent and they actually used a less amount of zinc in experiment number two as compared to experiment number one. So to put it a uh, in that point form, this is how you do it. So lower than, then you say zinc is the limiting reagent. Point two, a small amount of zinc is used in experiment two. And then point number three, you say thus the amount of the products produced will be less. So in that way, uh, the teacher has now made the learners understand the, the impact of the limiting reagent uh, on the amount of product formed. So what is the key takeaway here? Uh, the key takeaway is that if the limiting reagent is less, then also uh, the amount of products formed will be less. Okay, so let's proceed to 5.2.4. It says uh, experiment two was carried out at 40 degrees Celsius. The molar volume of hydrogen gas at this temperature is 25. 7 dm cube per mole um so we are given the what the the molar volume right we know that the molar volume is vm right so in your mind you already know that you have to use a particular formula there then 25.7 dm cube per mole that's our vm right then calculate the volume of hydrogen gas produced once the reaction reaches completion in experiment two now we are on experiment two but then remember that stoichiometry is not direct. So in this case, we are looking for uh, the volume of hydrogen gas. But then the information that we are provided with in experiment number two is uh, the information for hydrochloric acid and the zinc. But then everything that you are calculating here now must be based on the limiting reagent because remember what is the whole purpose of this is to find uh, the impact that the limiting reagent has on the amount of product that will be formed the h2 is also a product right so in order to calculate this we have to compare the limiting reagent to the hydrogen gas right because the limiting reagent is the one that will be used up completely in a chemical reaction so as soon as the limiting reagent is over or completely used up then also the reaction will come to completion Right. So it is not the excess reagent that will be an indicator of whether the reaction will continue or stop. It is actually the limiting reagent. When the limiting reagent is completely used up, the reaction comes to completion. Hence, we use the limiting reagent to find the maximum number of products that can be produced. Okay. So in this case, we have 5.2.4. We want to start by following our three stoichiometric steps which is number one we have to calculate the number of moles calculate the number of moles of a uh, zinc in this case which is the limiting reagent so note that we are on experiment number two so n z n that's m over big m then the mass is 3.27 over the molar mass is 65. When you punch that into your calculator, you get 0 0.05 mole, right? But then step number two would have to be to use the coefficient ratios. Use the coefficient ratios or ratio coefficients. Then we will say, what is the ratio of zinc to the hydrogen gas that we are looking for. And then looking at our balanced equation, we can see that the ratio is simply one is to one. Now we already know that a ratio of one is to one simply means that the number of moles for zinc will be uh, exactly the same as the number of moles for hydrogen gas. So therefore we can say number of moles of hydrogen gas is equals to 0 0.05 mole as well. And then step number three, is to then calculate for the required value. So this is where now we go back to the question and actually uh, read to find out what are we looking for. So we are trying to calculate the volume of hydrogen gas. So that's what we'll be calculating now because we, we have now found the number of moles. So calculate the volume, right? Calculate the required value. So this is our required value. It is the volume. 
Okay, so which formula are we going to use? Because we are given Vm here, then obviously we know the only formula that contains Vm is the one that goes n is equals to V over Vm. And then we've been provided with the value that they want us to use, 25.7. So the number of moles is 0 0.05. And then we have V over the Vm is 25. 0.7. Now, when you cross multiply this, you are supposed to get your volume as 1.285 uh, dm cube, of which if you prefer to round off to two decimal places, as per instruction of the exam, it's 1.29 uh, dm cube. So either one of these would be correct. And then that's how you could have uh, tackled this question. So make sure that you play the video as many times as possible and just try to understand the approach that I took into solving all of these questions here. But then with all that being said, guys, please press the thumbs up button if you have enjoyed the lesson and then you have found it helpful. And if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.